Hey guys, Kev here, and I'm going to do an open tag video. So, Gary over at The Last Ranger did an open tag video about the top three most carried knives for 2023. So, I wanted to uh, respond to that one. So, big shout out to Gary over at The Last Ranger. I'm going to link his channel down below. Definitely go check it out. Subscribe. Check out his content. He is a graphic designer, I believe, by trade, and he does some cool stuff. He's got cool editing, and, um, you know, he's just a dude who wants to show off his collection and sometimes his cat. <laughs> um, but anyway, shout out to you, Gary, and uh, let's get into the top three most carried knives for me in 2023. Don't know if any of these will be a surprise, but we'll see. I'm going to go three, two, one. So the first one is actually going to be a Devo knife. This is going to be the Devo Knives Pony Stout Prototype. So uh, we got these, uh, whew, man, I don't even remember when we got these. At the end of last year, maybe? No. Uh, yeah, something like that. And we put the knife into production pretty quickly. We uh, teamed up with White Mountain Knives on this one. So this is going to be a White Mountain Knives exclusive. It is actually uh, shipping to us now. So we've paid the final payment. And they are on the way. Um, we have a good number of these dropping. Uh, they should drop in May sometime is my guess. It'll depend because they have to QC all of them. Um, but this is going to be a budget model. So we have the price point um, at $75. So you'll be able to pick this up at White Mountain Knives for $75. If you use uh, a discount code like Lefty10, you will get 10% off of that $75. So you're in the $60, right? Um, you know, whatever it is, $68 or something like that, ship to your door for this. Um, this is going to come in two handle and two blade variations. So you're going to have Black G10 and you're going to have Blue Micarta. Um, it has contoured scales, uh, slight contour, which is really comfortable in the hand. It's a smaller version of our uh, stout design. So here's the stout right here. So we shrunk it down. We made it slightly taller and slightly um, thinner. Well, a lot thinner, actually. It's at like 0.44 in thickness. This is at 0.512. So you get a pretty big substantial difference there in terms of thickness. And you have that slight contour. It adds a lot for me in terms of comfort and then you have the smaller size you're looking at a 2.9 inch blade so you're going to be under that legal uh limit where this is a 3.3 inch blade but here's a quick look at both um you know the poon stays the same the blade uh deployment hole stays the same the ergonomics stay the same in the sense that you have this 50 50 choil and for me, this knife just melts into my hand. This is uh, one of, if not the most comfortable knife we've designed. Um, yeah, I'm really happy with it. QSP is the OEM. They did a great job on the hollow grind. So you have thin stock, right? It's 0.11 on stock. And then you take that and you add a hollow grind. And it comes down to uh, like 12 thousandths behind the edge, at least on this prototype. And they um, sent these razor sharp. And it's just a really good um, everyday carry knife for in the $60 range. I mean, that's to me, that's crazy. But then again, you know, it's it's our design and our knife. Um, I know you can get crazy stuff like Migarons with titanium clips and, and the same materials, 14C, 28N, um, for like 40 or 50 bucks. But, you know, we're not making these, so it does make it a little more expensive. Um, but we're doing our best to bring value here. And I think 14C and Micarta or G10 liner lock uh, with the wire clip for, uh, you know, 68, 75 bucks is pretty damn good. Uh, it does have a steel backspacer, steel hardware. That's, you know, how we were able to keep the price down. Nice detent on these prototypes. We did ask them to uh, match that or make it stronger. So. Hopefully they all come really good like this. We have skiff bearings will fit in here, 5 millimeter 1 16th. And you can swap the clip out to a Lynch clip or RGT clip, whatever you like. But I really like this knife. It's just, it's very functional. 
in a lot of grips in a lot of ways and it's uh, affordable so you can you know hard use it do whatever you want to do with it and um yeah it's been a pleasure to carry i've carried the shit out of this thing um obviously for prototyping to get feedback but beyond that just to carry it because it is that good to me i just really enjoy it um, i'm really liking this size range so you'll probably see the the other knives on this list are in the same size range but you look at that and um the devo knives lush that we're working on and it's just slightly bigger on the lush so um well i think they're about the same honestly they should be anyway um and it's just a really good size range, in my opinion, for everyday carry. I don't need a big bruiser knife or anything for what I do. I need a real thin slicer, you know. And unfortunately, Amazon is trying to take my job because every package I get now has like an easy open tab. I hate that. But number three is the Pony Stout from Devo Knives. There's a little shameless plug for you. Um, go check out White Mountain Knives. You can sign up for the newsletter now or sorry, sign up for notifications now. And then when they drop, you'll get an email telling you they dropped. We have about 800 of these that we are going to sell. So there should be plenty available um, for people to get, but uh, definitely check them out. We appreciate it. So the next two, you guys probably guessed it, are going to be slip joints. So I'm going to count these as one because it's the same model. So this is a Jack Wolf knife. This is the Cyborg Jack. And this is one of my favorite Jack Wolf knives. And I had gotten this one here in the Toxic Green, uh, I don't know, maybe a month or two ago. And it really sparked me wanting to carry this knife more. So I did, right? And um, I got these really dope slips from uh, Northwoods Leatherworks. You guys know I love Troy. He started using this ghost leather and... It's just really cool. I mean, you see this like black wax over yellow leather um, and it kind of just slowly patinas as you carry it. It's really cool. So I have that one that matches this toxic one. And then I have uh, the first one I got last year, the one in the uh, pink camo carbon with a pink Pueblo slip. So just a really cool lineup here. Um, and I genuinely love both of these in both configurations. So I've kept both, you know, there's a couple of models where I have multiple, um, I have two of these and I have two big bros currently. Um, but yeah, so this is the cyborg Jack. This one released in November, I believe. And, um, it's an absolute home run. Ben, uh, you know, this is basically an original design of his. It's not really like a traditional pattern that he turned into a Jack Wolf, um, like many of them are. He uh, designed this model. So I'm sure he started with a base point of something he'd seen, right? And then kind of went from there. But um, it's such a cool model. It has the best acoustics out of any of the models. Just really clanks and clangs. Fantastic spring on it. It just has such good walk and talk. It's very easy to pinch. You can see you have tons of room right here. If you're right-handed, yeah, the nail neck's down here, but nobody grabs it. You're just going to grab right here, right? Um, and so the pinchability is really good. Like I said, the spring tension is just on point. I'd say they're basically identical i mean it's amazing how they uh match those i can't pick between these i think maybe if you made me i would lean towards the toxic but it would be damn close and i wouldn't want to do it um so i mean you have no blade play on these you have a beautiful full hollow grind you have centering right down the nuts on both of these dead nuts boom just so good. I love the, the carbon fibers he uses. You guys know how much I love Jack Wolf's. And beyond that, it's very comfortable in the hand. And it cuts really well. I mean, it does have this belly to the tip. But for the most part, I'm just using that tip, popping under a, a piece of flap on a box and then swiping, right? And then maybe going up and swiping that part. Um, and that's it. You know, I'm doing a lot of fidgeting with these. 
So a lot of it is the walk and talk. I just really love it. And the way this model just like cradles perfectly in my hand, you see this area right here lands perfectly, nothing sharp. Just pop it like that. And it's just such a smooth and effortless knife to uh, manipulate. You know, it's just, I don't know how to explain it better. It's just really damn good. And I love it, you know, and size wise, I think it's a really good size. I was showing you the pony stout. It's going to be, you know, a little bit smaller than that, probably. Let's see. Pivot to pivot. No, I think it's slightly bigger than the Pony Stout. So, I mean, you might have a three-inch blade on the uh, Cyborg, something like that. Um, yeah, just really cool. Let's just double-check that real quick. There's the tip. Yep, just about three inches to the handle. Right about three inches. Let me check this. This should be 2.9. This one's all straight, so it's easy. Yep, yep, I got that right. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's the Cyborg. Just a wonderful, wonderful knife. And um, one of my favorite Jack Wolves. They're all kind of my favorites, but you know how it goes. Wonderful. So that's the Cyborg Jack. And the last one is another Jack Wolf knife. It's just, you know, I carry one every day, basically. I mean, the... Um, I just got it, but the Kvist Blade Works Vanish would be my honorable mention. So we can talk about that real quick, and then we'll do number one. Um, honorable mentions, right? So the Kvist Blade Works Vanish came in recently. I think it would be on this list if I've had the time with it, right? Um, I've only had a couple a week maybe with it so far. And it's just, man, it's a fabulous knife. It has the best one hand operating uh slip joint action you can get um, it's really really good um i really enjoy the colorways he did on these this one's kind of the called the killmonger it's got some gold and black um uh, really cool you have um no side to side play good bouncy uh spring it's not a jack wolf but for not being a jack wolf it's you know uh very very good centering's pretty much perfect on it again no uh play nice jump this spring is a little stronger i think i can feel it when i go from here out you hear that snap this one well i don't know see it's just a matter of kind of like carrying one and then you get used to it and then that's what feels right you know um they're just great and then uh beyond that the um usability because the most carried is going to be one you use a lot right this thing has the perfect ergonomics i don't know another way to put it it just for my hand that is my middle finger rests right into this slot and it wraps and everything just wraps around that and it's just perfect and then if i want to get into a pinch grip again i'm just landing in perfect places and it's so comfortable to use and then when you're done snap snap and you're done right it's just and then it's small it tucks away if you don't want to carry it in a slip you can have an even smaller footprint but i absolutely love troy slips as you know um i have one on the way for this i have two on the way actually because i'm anticipating buying another one of these um because i'm crazy and yeah so the vanish would definitely be a um honorable mention for me um, a couple others would be the uh, Pratheon from Arcane Design. It hasn't been in pocket much lately, just because, you know, new stuff comes in, etc. But it did uh, make it in the pocket for a long while there. And absolutely fantastic knife. This is the uh, carbon fiber version. It's a PBK Vegas exclusive. And uh, this is the best one, in my opinion. You get that belt satin 20 CV. You get a fantastic detent, at least in this case. Um, and you get carbon fiber, so you get that lightweight feel, kind of like the G10 ones, but you get that premium look and feel of uh, carbon fiber, and you get that blasted titanium finish. Reversible clip is a really nice touch for me, being a lefty. I love that. 
And uh, yeah, the Praytheon for me is easily uh, Israel's best model. And it's just a pleasure to own. And the last one is going to be a Vero knife. This is the Lefty Synapse. I have this knife in two configurations. I have a black washed with black uh, titanium and marbled carbon fiber. And then I have the marbled carbon fiber with uh, a, I guess it's stone washed handle and a belt satin. M390, both on skiffs, of course. Real smooth. I got the uh, Timascus clip on here. On this one, I have a Timascus clip and backspacer. And um, they're just equally good in their own way. Um, this one's a little snappier than this one here. I kind of tuned this one to be a little bit snappier than it came out of the box. But um, this one's a little more, you know, drop shut than this one. And that's kind of what you get with lock bar pressure, right? Um, but both are fabulous. The knife is wonderful. It's a little on the thicker side, but I got used to it pretty quick. Um, you know, all around it's kind of on the thicker side, but it still does the job EDC wise really well. And, um, it's just really cool to have a knife that's genuinely legitly awesome and is left-handed. Um, I say this a lot, but usually... I'm just getting it because it's left-handed, not because I actually really love the model, you know? Um, and that's how I feel about this one. I do wish this one had that detent, but, you know, it is what it is. It's really good, and once I carry it, I get used to this one, and then I love it just as much. So, um, fantastic knives, Bureau Engineering, Synapse, Lefties, and then... The number one carried knife of 2023 for me, Jack Wolf Knives Low Drag Jack. Um, this one's an easy number one for me. It's got a lot of things I love, right? It's got a compact size, nice, slim, small package, fantastic blade for utility cutting and stuff like that. Has a wonderful Northwoods Leatherwork slip that carries like a dream. And then to top it off, it's got the 80s camo carbon, which is my favorite by far. Um, and it just looks so good on here. It's more muted, and, and that's grown on me a lot. Um, originally, I was like, oh, man, it's not all, like, splotchy and stuff like my uh, Evo over here. You know, it's not, like, splotchy and crazy like this. But I like it on this because it's a slip joint and it's a slim knife and it, it just makes sense for it to be a little more su subdued and you get to see those lines really well because of the contoured scales. Um, we are dead nuts down the center. We have a uh, not the best pinchable knife, but it pinches nonetheless very well. And you have this beautiful fat spear point i never thought i would be a big fan of a spear point but this is my most used knife in a long time and especially this year and the reason for that is this blade shape right here it just eats and i've talked about this so many times i know some of you are going to be like oh my god but the way it just destroys material for me because you get it down here where it's thin and it just pulls everything into it. And it just uh, just cuts so well. You never come out of your cut. It stays razor sharp. I don't even think I've stropped this thing yet. And I've, I've destroyed boxes um, and opened a million packages with it. And, oh, I forgot. That's why. This is the first one with S9DV. Shit, I thought the low drag was in... Uh, why did I think this was in M390? Wait, did this come after the Havelina? This is the Havelina. No, this was um, S90V. Okay, so we have three now in S90V. I'm sorry. I don't know why. For some reason, I thought this one was in M390. So that's part of why I haven't had to uh, sharpen or strop it. <laughs> it's just because it's so good. Uh, I was wondering why it was so damn sharp still. Um... Beyond, I keep saying that, beyond the fact that it's uh, an amazing cutter, it is one of the most ergonomically comfortable knives I own. It just, man, it just melts into my hand. 
and um, pinch grip's good. Everything's good. I just love this thin to fat belly blade. It's not my style at all, but on this, it just works so well. I love the little end cap type thing, the little, little bullet end thing. That's what it's called, I think. Um, just a wonderful knife. I, I'm truly surprised I don't own two of these, and I think it's just because the 80s is where it's at, you know. I, I'm trying to think of the other versions they did. I think they did a yellow fat carbon. And they did one other one that I was... Oh, Miami. It was like a Miami camo carbon, which is pink and blue, which is kind of in here. Um, and I think that one was a, a bit more subdued, so I don't know. Um, that would probably be the one I would pick up if I, um, if I did. I don't know if there's another camo carbon i know he usually does three he probably did a uh some kind of fat carbon as well uh, i know he did the yellow but there might be a solid color one as well i'm trying to think of um hmm i don't know i'll have to look it up he didn't do jungle wear that was the javelina i think yeah, maybe he did do jungle wear on this. I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I might try to get another one just because of how much I love it. Um, like, get another one I can just beat up. But, um, yeah, it's fantastic. And then it has unbelievable walk and talk. It's funny because this was, like, the first one where I had any question about the action on it. If you watch my review or my unboxing, I was like, oh, this just it feels a little bit, like, sluggish and whatever, right? Well, this thing proved me wrong. All I had to do is loosen that pivot a touch and not like make it loose. There's no play. I think I just took it out and reset it. It was just a little over tightened from factory. And man, did this thing break in. Look at this spring power. It's just like, oh, and then it jumps there. And then it just has its own unique feel compared to some of the other ones. It doesn't like jump and shake like some of them. Um, but it's got a, a nice strong spring and it just like, I don't know how to explain it. It's so clean and smooth. It's got one of my favorite actions out of the uh, Jack Wolf line. So yeah, this is my most carried knife of 2023 so far. Then we have the uh, Cyborg Jack. I guess I'll put these over here and do this. I don't know what I'm doing. So you got one, two, and then the Pony Stout dropping next month at White Mountain Knives is number three. So two slash three slip joints and a folder, guys. Uh, things are changing, man. I, I really love slip joints. And if you're going to talk to me about most carried knives, you know, that's just what's going to be on the list because, well, I carry a slip joint every day, you know, and... That's just how it goes. So let me know what you guys think. I'd love to hear your top three carried knives this year so far. If you have a channel or if you don't and you want to do a video, I would love to uh, see that video. Go ahead and tag me in it. And please go over to the Last Rangers channel. Give Gary a shout out. Tell him I say what up. Uh, great idea for a video, dude. And uh, yeah. Um, I love you guys. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic day and I will catch you later.